then we have a whole typography class, but we do a little bit of typing in, in my class as well. This is a very low light type. If you think about it, that little box over in the corner there, laser printer, and this little box in front of you, um, you know, what made those two things work together greatly is the way to make a page on your doc on your computer and print it out easily. And of course, who invented all that technology? Apple, Adobe, and uh, HP. And so when I design some type on the screen, then I send it over there to that laser printer over there. What language are they talking? They're using the guide code. Speaking of not Spanish, not English, postscript. The term is called postscript. Right. Let's see if anybody knew what postscript was while we were here. So uh, the, 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 the term we describe is called postscript, and it is a language that allows the paper to determine where to put the dot, basically. Because right, that thing puts dots down on the page. And so how does it know where to put the dots down? Postscript has uh, um, it's evolved over the years to a different version of Postscript, but it's still the same concept that the laser printer makes up a page on how many dots per square inch. That's probably a 600 DPI laser printer over there. And of course, how fonts are done in the computer are done uh, by uh, using a font suitcase inside the computer. And uh, uh, we different suitcases have different um, fonts. Let's talk about history. I love history. I love history. If I can find a marker, we'll have history. Let's go back in time. Back to 1980s. So we had computers back in the 1980s and a laser printer back then in the 1980s. And in order to use a font on your screen, as well as have it print out, you had to have fonts on your computer. So our first font that we used on our computer was called Type 1. Imagine that. So early type on the computer was called Type 1 fonts. The downfall of Type 1 fonts is you had to have different sizes. So if you wanted to use 12 point times, you actually had to have a folder or a file on your computer that said 12 point times. If you wanted to use 16 point times on your thing, you had to have a folder or a file on your computer that said 16 point times. So you actually had to have a little file on your computer to represent each font size you wanted to use. We'd have these, you would take all these and put them into a folder called a font suitcase. This is where the term font suitcase came from. So not only did you have to have a screen, that we call these screen fonts so I can look at them on the screen. You also had to have the 12 point times and the 16 point times printer font. So in order to send it to the laser printer over there, you, it would actually have to have a printer font on your computer and it would send it over to the laser printer so it would display it properly. So it was called type one. It was the first kind of computer type that we would use. Very inefficient as you can tell. Okay, the board was messy. Like we said, as a font size all over the place. Then of course you would have to take these to the printer. Say you're getting something printed out at like a print shop somewhere, you had to take and install this onto your onto your disc or wherever you're taking, and take it to the print shop. They had to have to make sure they had the right size. It was a problem. So they came up with a new way, and it was called true type. True type. And true type is still used today. Today you'll probably see some true type. Well, the ability of true type is to have scalable fonts. So I can have one font suitcase for one font. Times just have times. I can put times on the screen. I can scale it as big as I want and shrink it down as small as I want. Big font. So true type was a great way to have fonts <coughs> that are scalable. You don't have to do with a messy of different sizes. The downfall is you had to have one for Mac and one for Windows. They weren't compatible. Now they're kind of compatible, but back then they were compatible. True type also had some problems with, since it scaled, uh, spacing between letters weren't very good and stuff like that. So then Adobe said, wouldn't it be great if we could even have something better than that? Better. So they came out with what we call open type. 
open <coughs> and open type is what we use today. Uh, we still use both of these, but open type is um, Adobe's latest type format. Um, there's got the advantages of spacing, glyphs, <coughs> all the little nuances of text. I'm sure Gene will talk about that in the next class. But open type is what we use today. Um, and let's go download some fonts and use them in a design today. So, uh, of course, the website that we download fonts is, is called DA Font, DA Font.com. We're going to download, that's a D, DA Font.com. We're going to download and put the fonts on our computer, and then um, we will use them in our thing. Okay, so you might find open type. <coughs> or true type fonts. Uh, when you download from this website, it downloads as a zip, and you need to uncompress it. Once you uncompress it, then you can then install it. Hopefully you have the rights to install in there. I know I have the rights on the teacher station. I don't think we're using that anymore. But, you know, the, the dudes who control the computers, they, they blocked you out. I don't know. So let's look at some fonts. Uh, again, the website that you might want to use, and if you have a program running, you can't have it. You can't install fonts when the program is running. So if you got Illustrator running, I'm going to quit Illustrator because if you try and install a font while a program is running, it won't be there because the fonts are installed a as you load an application. So again, the, probably the the easiest place to find fonts, of course, there's fonts all over the place. There's companies that specialize in fonts. Adobe sells a bunch of fonts, but there's a what I'm calling a social media of fonts, if there's such a word, social media of fonts. What is the social media of fonts? Well, anybody can design a font and put it on there, right? So maybe you're um, an inspiring font maker. You can make fonts and put them on there. Uh, there used to be a program we used to make fonts actually in the classes in the digital meeting. We used to make fonts using called Fontographer. Wow, that was probably 15 years ago. I also used Fontographer to convert Mac fonts to Windows fonts and Windows fonts to Mac fonts back in the day. They weren't compatible. Now they're pretty compatible. Are they all free? Well, there's licensing agreements. We'll look at that. But go there, go there right now. DAfont.com. So I'm going to go DAfont.com. <coughs> DAfont.com. Okay, again, this is kind of like a social media of fonts. They have a variety of different categories, as you can see. You want a typewriter font, you want an army font, you want a grid, or I don't know, distorted, old school, groovy, comic. Oh, I like groovy. Let's do groovy, baby. Groovy. Oh, look at that. Bubble 3D. So as you're looking at the font, you'll see there's different licensing agreements. Some say 100% free. What do you think? If it's 100% free, you think I could put it on a billboard on the side of 101? Yeah. Yes, okay. 100% free means you can do it and use it. But there's some of them say free for personal use. You think I could put that on a billboard on a 101, driving on 101? Yeah. No. Well, you can email the author. Remember, this is a social media, right? You can email the person who made the font and ask them for rights to do that. So that's the way <coughs> So like WordPress people, right? They, they make WordPress themes and they put them out there, you know? I actually, if you know Jennifer, <coughs> she has a, she's like two or three WordPress themes that she made and she sells them. So people are trying to make money. Oh, look, keep on trucking. Look, at this a Grateful Dead one. There we go. I'm going to download the Grateful Dead font. So I click download. Notice it says save file. Use the save file, and we'll uncompress them all at the same time. So where is it going to go? Downloads folder. So I'm going to save keep on trucking because that looks cool, and I'm going to make a Grateful Dead poster. Um, let's see. What do we want here? Disco? Was that disco? <laughs> Look at that one. Oh, Pac-Man font. And there's a lot of them there. Um, and be aware that since this is social media, open kind of source, <laughs> and you're downloading a zip file, it could come with a virus. I'm not saying that I ever got a virus from this website, but remember, it's kind of an open thing. You know? So some people might not be as moral as you are and might put a virus in there, right? <laughs> I have 
not heard of anybody, but I've heard of people online said they got a bad experience. And then my students have got a bad experience that I know of. Okay, so. Yeah, put them on here. Yeah, don't put them on your own computer. No, you can put them on. I, I have them on my computer. But I was just typing a 20 minute email and my computer just went black on me. So I don't know if that was good. So uh, let's see what other they got. They got all of these. Um, I like the, the Celtic modern. These ones right here, the Gothic ones are really good. Techno ones, I've used these. I got some sci-fi ones. So you can think, you got Jedi one. There you go, Jedi one. I'm going to download the Jedi one. <coughs> uh, oh, Blade Runner's new. Isn't it coming out this week? Blade Runner new. Blade Runner coming out this week. Then they have holiday ones, right? Oh, Halloween's coming up, isn't it? This is October. Is it October already? Yes. Look at that. It's October. We can make a Halloween poster with this, right? Somebody have a Halloween party. We'll go. Let's all have a Halloween party. Plus, they have, um, you know, graphics as well. You can get dingbats, right? right? These are called dingbats, where they're little graphics that represent the... What is shareware mean? What? Shareware? Well, it means you can share... Read the read what it says. I kind of like the Celtic ones. There's pretty good ones under there. Uh, Stonehenge, very good. Old school script ones. You might want to have a nice handwritten one. So find some couple ones you might want to try. I don't know. Think of a theme. You need to draw your your assignment this week is to draw uh, um, something with only letters, with only characters. I'll show you samples. We'll get to it. Let's just try <coughs> fonts first. Hunger Games. I don't know about those Russian ones. I'll be weird if those ones talking viruses there, right? <laughs> They're all under the Russian one. It's okay. Actually, if you don't have a, a you know virus protection, you can get some virus protection. No, I don't, you know, it's not already loaded on, but, you know, everybody says, oh, they don't get viruses on Macs. They, they have viruses out there for Macs, especially on your phone. Ooh, I like Gothic. Yeah. I actually use Kaspersky. Anybody use Kaspersky? I use Russian, Russian virus software. Yeah, I figured the Russians are already in the viruses, and I'll just use their, their Russian uh, um, virus protection. <laughs> Actually, it just came out, was it two weeks ago, that, that the, the federal government, you're not allowed to use Kaspersky if you work for the federal government. Yeah. Did yeah. you do that? Yeah. It's, it's the I best. Think. I mean, even you would think they want to use the best, but hey, they don't want to use the best because they're pretty good. It's compromised with this Russian already. They probably have my information on that. So you can exactly steal from four people who really need yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's go and uncompress and install our font. To uncompress and install our font, we need to go find a zip file. The zip file is going to be located inside your downloads folder. So if you go to your hard drive, I'm going to minimize this, minimize my Firefox. If I go under my hard drive and go to my downloads folder, you'll see this is zip, 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 zip. These are all compressed files. To install the font, yeah? Why are they, why are they in the because they have licensing agreements and stuff like that go along with it. So it's just not the font. It makes it easy to, to distribute. So if I double click on my zip file, you'll notice it'll open up a folder. Inside that folder, you'll, you, if you see one that says TTF, that stands for the number two on the board, true type font. If I double click on it, it should ask me, do you want to install the font? Notice there's a big button that says install font. Boom, click on that. And if it gives you a message like that and says there's a violation, just click the little checkbox right here. There's a little checkbox and say install checked, and it should install it. 
So let me do another one. Again, I'm going to go back. Go, there's a back button there. I'm going to do hello stranger. There we go. I'm going to double click on that. And there, oh, do you see this one has OTF. That stands for number three on the board. Open type format. Remember number three on the board? If I double click on there, it'll ask me to install font. Install font. It should install it. Uh, what have I got? Halloween. There we go. Double click on that. Open it up. TTF, true type font. Double click on that. Install font. Oh, that one looks like it has some errors in it. Maybe some viruses in it. And then, oh, Blade Runner. There we go. Blade Runner. Install font there. There it is. If you get this window, just check the box and say install checked. And then, oh, keep on trucking. That's right. We're going to make a Grateful Dead poster here. There we go. So try and install some fonts. Okay, so a lot of interesting fonts on the Utah. Make sure you read the licensing agreement, though. Be legal. Try to be legal. As best you can. Right? Don't somebody stealing your photo online and using it and building it on the side of 101, do you? Unless you want to be legal, right? Yeah. Shop with iPhone 6. Yeah. Yeah. Or, 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 now that you can shop with iPhone X or whatever. Remember the things that have the words that we said, shop with yeah. yeah. like it. Okay, make sure I had Illustrator. Remember, I had Illustrator that was not running. Remember, Illustrator was not running. If you had Illustrator running, you would need to restart. Now I'm going to go to Illustrator, and let's look at how I can see the fonts in Illustrator. Okay, let's just uh, talk about your next uh, three assignments. Okay. Um, the one we did this week is called using price as a shape. So you have to make a drawing out of nothing but letters and symbols. I will show you samples of letters we use here. And I have had some really great ones over the years. The next one we're going to do a mission patch, which is a space. Whatever, well, whenever they send things into space, whatever they're sending up there, by satellite, whatever, they uh, make a patch that goes along. Okay, and so if you ever been to NASA or um, at the um, Kennedy Space Center or wherever, you can walk down the hall and they'll have all these patches. That's how I thought about this assignment because I was at uh, Kennedy Space Center in Florida about two years ago, and I'm like walking down the hall and I saw all these, you know, soon, you know, they have different patches for each and every thing. And so it's a little drawing in a circle with, you know, with the name of the mission, right? And so we learn how to, of course, draw things in a circle. We draw where the spaceship, whatever the rocket's going. And then uh, we learn how to use a flipping mask. That's one of the things we learn in there, as well as uh, how to get letters to go along a circle. Okay, and so we make something like that. So you'll have to make something like that. So letters in a little circle. And then uh, I think I discussed uh, the midterm kind of project where you have to print it out about a class yeah. where we're going to do a, um, an artist statement. So you might want to start thinking about artists. So those are the things we do in the next three weeks. Let's continue with our TED Talk. How, how hard is it to make like a, a big poster? Like one straight to your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I wish I could. Yeah, I know. Right. One thing is it, Jean, where Jean used to live in this one place, um, couldn't park in certain spots unless you had a, 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 park, a parking pass. And it's like a parking pass for her little complex that she used to have. Uh -huh. And so that's what we did. We, we just it <laughs> and we printed it out in red so I could go park in front of her house without getting a ticket. Like one time I parked on curb. Oh, did they? They found out? They didn't well, I forgot to put the pass on. Oh. And so, yeah. 
uh, you know, you know, me and Gene had to, to try to get my car out of um, yeah. the pound, you know, at like midnight, it's like midnight, you know, it's just $250 later. Yeah. Okay, let, let's look at our letters and how we put them in. We haven't really talked too much about letters. We did do a little USA on the side of our rocket ship, right? But that's, that's about it. So let's go, and I'm going to make a new file inside of Illustrator. Um, it doesn't matter what size it is right now. And let's talk about putting letters on the screen. Okay, so this is the type tool. It's the one that's kind of one, two, three, four down. You see you got normal type tool, you got an area type tool. The area type tool is where you actually put text inside a, a shape. You got text along a path, that's where you have text that follows a, a stroke. You got vertical type tool that gets text that go down. You got area vertical type tool that it would be a shape that the text goes down. You got vertical type on a path, of course, and then you got a touch type tool, which is for um, doing interactive things. Um, I don't really do too many interactive things in Illustrator. Yeah, it's like a simulated button, and you can export out of CSS and things like that. Now, the first one, there's two ways of doing it, okay? The first one is if you click on the screen and let your finger up, you can type a box. So let's try that one. So I'm going to click on the screen. Notice it puts some text in there. I can start typing some text. This is great. Now it's like 12 point whatever, some sans serif font. To change all the font and characteristics of your text, you can go and bring up the character window. There's a character option right here. If you look at the very top bar and click on that, it brings up the character option inside there. You can then go and choose your font. Uh-oh, it's not changing. Why? Because I don't have it selected. So in order to have your text selected, you can either use the text tool that we have and, and kind of go over top of it to select it. Then I can make my changes. and change the size here okay so if you're using the select tool you don't have to highlight the text if you have the entire line of text selected using the what the black selection tool the direct uh, selection tool right there if you select the entire line then you can go and change it without having to select the letters because it, it's it, it's assume you want to change the whole thing the fonts that you downloaded should show up in your list. I don't know. Oh, here it is, Blade Runner. There it is. Ooh, I'm going to type that in, Blade Runner. Ooh. Let's t change that. Blade Runner. Blade. Oh, look. It's the dude. Oh, did you see that? Blade Runner. And then, look at that. That is so cool. Or what? Blade Runner. <laughs> Okay, so um, size-wise, if you're looking at characters, if you don't know by now, but 72 is in the very last list in the size there, that equal to one inch. And I know many of you might not be from Estados Unidos and don't know what one inch is. It's, uh, it's one inch, it's only a measure. So 72 point equals one inch on your screen right here. That's why it's the last one there. But you can go above that. I can go and type in 120 if I want. And it'll make it 120. Another way to change the size is you can put your cursor, if you're using, of course, the direct selection, you'll put your cursor on the edge and scale. If you hold the shift key down, it'll scale it in proportion, right? Again, if you're using this, you can scale in proportion. Scaling, of course, then the font size is going to be kind of random. And notice it has a point. You see it says 55.28, so it'll give you, like, partial um, so that is how we do sizing. You can also change with the letters if you want. If you want, you can highlight just individual letters and color them separate color if you want. So you can do that as well. Okay, so again, but that's using the text tool. Text tool. Okay, let's do another way of putting text on the screen. A separate way of putting text on the screen is not to click and let your finger up, but it's to click and make an area for your text. 
So if I click with my text tool, again, the first text tool right here, type tool, if I click and drag, it makes a box. And then, of course, I'm not going to type that in. I can type, uh, I'm going to make it small. Let me go back to, I don't know, 21 point. And let me type in some text. Notice it'll wrap, wrapping, wrapping. If you see a little X in the bottom corner, it means there's more text than can be visible in the box. The problem with this text is it has, um, um, I don't know what's going on with this text. Why? I don't know. It's a mess. It took on the characteristics of the last text I had. That's why. Let me delete that. Let me try again. Draw a box. There we go. So again, wrapping text. It can wrap text by putting a box. Now when we're looking at text in there, and let me make this a little bigger here. You'll notice you have different characteristics. This is point size, right? Point size is this one. So normal point size might be 14 point. Let me put some regular font in there. Uh, Arial. 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 There we go. Arial. Arial regular. Beautiful Arial regular. So this is a, um, a font. So you'll notice that you got size right here. This is line spacing or letting. See how it says letting there? Right there, letting. Letting would be the space between the baseline. So terms you should know, illustrator terms you should know. <coughs> you have lines of text inside of a computer program. You have the word text. And the text usually sits on the line there. The line that the text is sitting on is called the baseline. Baseline. The line between one baseline to another baseline is either called line spacing or letting. The terms are interchangeable. The word letting comes from old typefaces where you have to, have to put little letter, letters, little pieces of metal into a frame. And then to, to space the letters, you would put pieces of lead in between to, to add space between the letters. And the term letting is a little bit from that. When I was in high school, we had um, shops like that. They used to do um, industrial arts or whatever it used to be called. And we had a printing press. I, I made myself a little newsletter with each individual letter. And you had to put a little metal in there. And then the printing room was printed like that. It was crazy and fun. And we had welding. We could make things if we all wanted to make swords and things like that. We did that. <laughs> but letting okay, comes from that or line spacing. Uh, what else? You should know the term X height. X height is the term that describes the space from the top of a lowercase letter X to the bottom of the baseline. That's referred to as X height. X height. Um, if a letter is moved off the baseline, let's say I wanted to put one half of that, or sometimes trademark, right? We have to keep Trademark is kind of up in a corner and off the baseline. That's called a baseline shift. Baseline shift. And um, when, whenever we're writing, you'll notice that the line spacing tends to be calculated by the computer. And if you look right now, I have 14 point text, right? And you'll notice there is a round bracket around the 16.8 point line spacing. Do you see that? That's because the computer is calculating that automatically for me. And the reason why the number is like that is it's calculating automatically is because it's a standard kind of, you know, the computer's making an adjustment for me. And it comes from, you know, we usually have more spacing than size because if you put the, that equal, the, it's, the letters start jamming together. In fact, before we were uh, had computers to design on, and I, I actually come from the old school where we actually did line, we would actually plan a layout on paper and then actually have it photographed and so on. But we wouldn't do the letters actually, even when we were planning, okay? We wouldn't even do the letters. What we would do is we would plan where the letters would go in the layout and then we would give it to a typesetter and that typesetter then would go and make the letters for us. 
And in order to do that, we used to have to write on our blue drawings where the letters would be, and we would write something like 14 slash 18 or something like that. And what that just tells the typesetter is I want 14 point letter with 18 point line spacing. And so we would write it on our document like that, and then the typesetter would go and make the letters and then make the back of letters. You would cut them out with a scissors or with a exacto knife, and you would glue them down on a piece of paper, then take that to a giant camera that was like the size of a building or the size of a room, and we would photograph that onto a, a plate, and then take that plate and then put it on a printing press, and then print our document. And that's how we used to do that in the 80s, early 80s, we then learned how to do that. Then by 1986, 87, I started using it. Yeah. It was fun doing it by hand. A lot of times I actually add more line spacing right here. So I would click on this and actually increase my line spacing. If I have something like a sans serif font, I tend to use a lot of line spacing, something like that. I, you know, this is a sans serif font. It's not very easily readable. Arial isn't very readable. Right? We have two kind of major types of fonts in there. You have one that's called sans serif that's kind of blocky like this, right? You look at the font, you know, it's blocky. It doesn't have little handles. But if you look at something that's printed, like a book or a magazine, or they usually use serif fonts. Serif fonts are the ones with the little handles, right? Like times. So let's look again. Two types of major fonts. We have sand. Serif. Sans serif are ones of the blocky ones like this. Usually great for headline, good for reading on the internet as well. But you know, it, it's it's not very easily read. It's hard to read one. Yeah, it's well, it's actually bigger. The X height is larger in the sans serif font than it is in the serif font. And then we have what we call serif. A serif font is one that has like the little handles on it. Yeah. And why do we have two different kind of font flavors? We'll call them flavors. And then, of course, you got specialty brush ones and things like that. But these are kind of the two, two main flavors. Well, the serif one works great for publishing in books because these little handles help your eye to read across the page. It's a strain on your eye. It's easier for your eye to follow along with the little handles. It makes the eye flow better than this. And plus, this is not as easily read in a certain size. Okay, so also serif font takes up less space than sans serif. And I love when, I, when I'm teaching my computer science class and the students are teaching them the MLA format. And they have to write their English paper and I tell them, you know, an English teacher says, oh, you got to have eight, eight pages for that English paper. I said, well, make sure you use sans serif font for your English paper. Do 12 point Arial is going to take up more space than 12 point times. Watch, if I change this to times, watch how many lines I got. You'll see this big section and make it small. Watch, I gotta, let me convert this to times. Not changing any size. I'm going from Arial, which is sans serif, and let's go all the way down to times. Times, where's times? We even have times. Times, New Roman. There it is. Look at the space. A lot less space. Look at that. Here, we'll do before. Oh, where's my undo? Oh, I can't undo? Oh, here it is. More. Oh, geez, whatever. You get the idea. Arial. Times is going to take up less space. You can even see it as I move around. Look, some take up more space than others. Some take up more space than others. Where is it? Where's times, times, times? Oh, there it is. No, MLA format does not specify you have to use a certain font. Unless your teacher says you have to use a certain font. Yeah, my teacher says, I'm new <laughs> <laughs> When you write my paper in my computer class, uh, you can use any font you want. <laughs> okay, so line spacing. You want to understand some of these things? I'm sure Gene has a whole typography class. We do all kinds of typography in your class. There you go. So you already know most of that already. 
Okay, so type is good to know these certain terms. Let's look at some of the other ones. So I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. Notice the reason why we do the word wrapping is, or so look, see how I make the box bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller. Notice if I make the column here, let's say I'm doing columns of text. Notice the little red dot, little red thing at the bottom here. That means there's more text than fits in the box. So if I want another column of text, I can click on that red box, come over here, and make a new column. Look at that. And the, the text will actually wrap from one column to the other. All right? So just like you were doing, you know, let's say this was a page layout. I mean, text to go from one column to the other. You see that little red X? It means there's more space. You can make another column. Notice it makes the same column the same size as the first one. We'll get to that when we do the artist statement. This is just introduction today. Okay, let's try the next one, which is the area type tool. See the area type tool? So let's say I wanted to make a beautiful heart, and I want my text to be in there. I'm making a Valentine's Day card. So I could make myself a nice heart. Can you make a heart from a circle? Who can make a heart from a circle? I can. Yeah, look, you use your anchor point tool. Remember that? Remember when we did that the first day with the... Uh, with the, uh, we were doing pedals, of, remember the pedals? Convert that to a nice little one like that. Maybe drag that down a little bit. Oh, there we go. Drag that down a little bit. I'll take the first one up there. Let's convert that as well. Convert this. Uh-oh, no, we don't want it like that. What do we want? No, we want little arms like that. Oh, we got to move our arms. We got to move them up. Uh-oh, that doesn't look good. Oh, but we can hold down the option key and move this one separate. Oh, there we go. That's looking more like a heart, isn't it? There we go. Oh, we'll spread it out there. Spread it out there. There we go. There we go. Perfect for your Valentine's Day card. It's not perfect, but hey, it's good enough. So let's say I want to put text in here. You can put text into the shape. The biggest problem you're going to run into is the shape will disappear. Yes? Yes? So the biggest thing, the shape will disappear. So if you want to have the color shape, let's say I want to keep this as like a background color. Maybe I want to make this, let's say, red. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to duplicate it. And the reason why I duplicate the shape is because as soon as I go over here to the type tool and use the area type tool, it, the type is going to disappear. If I come over here and I click in here, uh-oh, going to click on side. There we go. And click on the edge. You got to click on the edge. It'll put it in there. And of course, I don't want that text in there. I'm going to put love, love, love. It's a Valentine's Day card, right? There we go. A couple of uppercase loves and a couple of lowercase loves. Uh oh no, I don't want that. Notice how it'll follow the shape. Ah, oh, really, really, it's searching love online for me. Look at that. I'm I'm searching for love online. Look at that. Okay. So again. Notice how the, the shape disappeared, and then I can, oh, there we go, oh, it needs reordered, didn't it, doesn't it need reordered, oh, yes, bring the front, there we Mine go. Doesn't work. Mine doesn't work. You got to click on the edge. Here, make a circle. Then if you want to put text in there, use this one, area type tool, but click, don't click in the center, it's going to give you that message. You got to click on the edge, on the edge of the circle. Oh, there you go. There you go. How's everybody doing? Ready to move on to the type on the path? Did you try the area type? I'll take a break. I'll take a minute. Try it real quick.
Okay, let me finish uh, the last the last one. We'll do. We don't have to do them all today, but you'll see. There's one that says type on a path. Pretty much does what it says. Type on a path. Remember, the path will disappear just like the shape did. So let's say I am making uh, waves, right? And I want to make lines on a wave. I can make a wave. Use your pen tool or whatever you want. Don't I have a pen tool? There we go. And, oh no, maybe let's use the pencil tool. Where's the pencil tool? Your pencil tool. And I want to draw a nice wave. Okay, draw a nice wave. I would use the text tool right here. And I would click on the edge, on the edge. And it puts text along a path and you can type in what you want. The text will run along the wave. You can change the size of it. Again, if you get the real red X at the end, it says there's more than that than can fit. And I can have them make another wave. Two waves. doesn't fit another way another way oh, it, it doesn't look it looks like it fits I don't know so again you can use that text along a path um, again we can do a circle and we can do text that goes around the circle or inside oh I did the wrong one sorry what was it text along a path so text can go around in a circle You can also move where the letters are by adjust on the path by adjusting the actual text. So if I take text along a path, like I just did here, if I use the white selection tool, the white one, you'll notice I get these two lines at the front. See these two lines at the front here? See them? These lines can be used to adjust where the text starts. So I can click on the line and move it, and click on the line and, and oh, click on the line and. Um, See how I can move it? So I can move text along the path. This is like the starting point, and this is like the moving point. So again, you can move it. There's like a little line at the beginning. So practice some of those things your assignment will be to um, your assignment let's get the canvas we know we love canvas everybody loves canvas and we don't have to do this today we can do it next class but you might want to start thinking about it now your assignment is um, type as a design element right here and inside there you'll notice uh, here's some previous so you need these are all letters right so you need to make like this is an example of somebody made a portrait out of letters somebody made Taj Mahal out of letters somebody made a doggy out of the words doggy Okay, so your assignment is to make something kind of similar to that. Um, you'll see some, there's some more reading in there. I'll, we can do this together next class, but you might want to start thinking about it now. Um, there's the DA font link. Here's the Adobe font link. Here's anatomy of type. This tells you all the different type options. Remember X height, baseline, A sender, D sender. Here's all the terms you need to know. Are you no. And then um, here's some videos you can watch. And then here's some examples on uh, uh, deviantart.com. 
like that's a good I had some really good examples like this it just I don't know they I, I lost some of them and then that's a cute one there too it's kind of like a tree right and here's a nice one and you can see a whole bunch of them over here look at this one Yeah, we can show you that next class. If you start with a font at home and then want to work on it here in the lab, you would have to install it. You would have to install it. Yes. Unless you, if it's just a shape or convert it to an object, then you wouldn't have to. I haven't shown you how to convert it to an object yet. So those are things you should be doing on Canvas. I think everything else, uh, um, you know what, everything else. Aren't you supposed to do another uh, uh, reading on Canvas too? Or was it a watch a video? I think you're supposed to do another point line and plane. You're supposed to read about point and write about it. Discussion. Discussion, yes. You should do that. It's outside. You're supposed to do outside work in this class.